In our previous video, we saw how to write to a queue from a program. That's the program represented on the left, where we have a somewhat frequent process that involves some downstream high intensity activity. So we've written to the queue. In this video, we're going to see how to read from a queue with a different program, and that's a program that theoretically we could possibly scale up and put on different hardware because it's going to be doing the resource intensive process. Eventually, we'll likely have it do something like resize and watermark images, but in this video, we just want to start the project and have it read from a queue. So let's get started. Since this is a brand new project, I'm going to spring initializer. The group we'll call com dot plant places dot photos. The artifact we'll call uh, plant places post processor. And then the dependencies, I see I have active MQ already selected. Let me show you how I got that. I just said active and you notice it came up by default. So active MQ, we make sure that that's selected so we get our active MQ dependencies and then we generate project. Now the project is downloaded. Let's go ahead and show it in the folder. We have plant places post processor. So I'll open it up, right click, choose copy. And now I will put it somewhere where I can open it from Eclipse. I'll just go ahead and throw it in documents for the moment. Now in Eclipse, I need to import this as a Maven project because indeed it is a Maven project. So we'll choose file import and then existing Maven project. And then we will select from documents plant places post processor, select, and notice it picks up the palm automatically. It will take a few moments here to process as soon as I choose finish. We have a bit of a long-winded package there, so I could probably refactor that at some point. But nonetheless, you see that we do have a Spring Boot application. So a couple things I want to do. I want to go ahead and add the at enable JMS annotation here, and that will confirm once I import, that will confirm that we do indeed have the right libraries uh, engaged. You see we have the import option. It's still thinking a little bit as it's working through this uh, application, but nonetheless we now have enable JMS. Now let's make a new class that will listen in to our queue. So I'll right click and say new class. And we'll call this one photo processor. Inside of photo processor, I'm going to make a public method, public void process photo, open and close. And then we're going to annotate this with JMS listener, lowercase ms, that's easy to miss. And inside of this, we need to give it a destination, which is our queue name. So we'll say destination equals, and then just like so. Now let's remember what the queue is that we're publishing to. So for that, I'm going to go to our existing application and I'm going to take a look at our photo DAO, which is doing the publishing. So if we take a look at photo DAO, we'll see that it is sending to a queue named photos. And in photo processor, we'll say destination equals photos. And looks like we need to import this as well. So we'll do a little import here. Now let's give ourselves a bit of space here. Now the method signature we need to think a little bit about because we just need to think of what's going to be placed on this queue. So if we go back again to the photo DAO, we see that it's a fairly straightforward item. It's just a string. And many times a queue is just used as a way to notify a process downstream. Other times it can actually contain payload. So let's go ahead and say string path. And then we'll do a simple system out print line here to show that path. And that will be at least enough to give us a, a bit of debugging. So I'll add one more debugging line in here in i equals one plus one, just something that we can use to debug. The process here is actually quite straightforward because we just need to annotate this JMS listener and we also need to give the at component annotation. We can also specify a container factory in this JMS listener annotation to tell it what queue we want to connect to. But we have another option as well, something that might be a little more straightforward in our case, and that is we can just tell application properties where to find the queue manager. So I'm going to the plant places project, the one we've been developing in a prior video. That project is essentially the producer for our application. It's what puts things onto the queue where the program that we're writing now is the consumer, which is going to read things off the queue. So it makes sense that we would have the same configuration either way, uh, both to put on the queue and to take off. So I'm simply going to paste the configuration properties from plant places producer to our plant places post processor as a consumer. And with this, we now have a program that reads from a queue. So all we need to do now is try it out. I paused the video for a moment so that I could start the 
producer application in Upload a Photo. So see, uh, actually here you see the confirmation that I've uploaded a photo. And here you can see that we have one message queued that's waiting to be consumed. So I've not yet started the consumer application that we just created, but I will go ahead and do that right now. So I simply right click on the Plant Places application, the photo processor application, and choose Debug As, and then Java application. Now you notice as soon as it starts up, a breakpoint hits. So I go ahead and switch, and I will note that I have two different Swing Spring Boot applications running now. The web framework one, that where I can upload the photo, and then this one, which doesn't have any real uh, user interface, it's simply pulling items off the queue. You see the breakpoint is hit, and let's take a look at the path. You see, sure enough, we have a path in here, which is a photo called Mahonia2.jpg. So if you can kind of uh, take a look at that, and I'll move it over just a little bit so you can see the full path. This is coming to us via the queue. So once again, just take a look at where the queue is now. I'll go ahead and refresh, and you'll see that number of uh, consumers, if you saw that, went to one. Number of pending messages is still one. Let's go ahead and tell this to play. We'll tell it to resume. And let's go back and look at the queue one more time. And now you see the number of pending messages has dropped to zero because I have consumed that item on the queue. Let's do it full cycle now. Let me go ahead and show you a brand new item I'll put on the queue. So we'll just put in some dummy values here for latitude and longitude. Remember, this is the web application we worked on in a previous video. And this is the producer that is putting onto the queue. So we'll call this one Mahonia. We'll pick a new one this time. We'll say Mahonia Confusa, and now choose File, and this will be the real test. Remember Mahonia 5, remember that name, and I choose Upload. Now a breakpoint hits, but this breakpoint is in the producer application. This is the one that is uploading the photo. So you can see that what it's doing is it's saving the file locally, and then it adds to the JMS queue. So one more time, we'll do a before and after. Notice before, no pending messages. Now let me go ahead and tell it to step over this next line. And let's go back and take a look again. And you see number of pending messages increments to one. So this line, which we did in a prior video, JMS template convert and send, and then photos, and then path to string, that's putting the item on the queue. I'll go ahead and resume this. No surprise, the consumer application that we just wrote its breakpoint just hit as well. So its breakpoint will only hit, or in other words, this, this method will only be invoked as soon as something is placed onto the queue. And if we take a look at the path that was passed in, let's take a look at the very end of that path, and we'll see Mahonia 5, which hopefully sounds familiar. So you see two completely different applications, two completely different processes were able to communicate by putting this message on the queue. I hit play, and the breakpoint once again will not be waiting. Uh, this will pick up one more time as soon as something else is added to the queue. But in the meantime, it's essentially asleep, consuming minimal resources. So in this video, we've taken a look at how easy it is to read from a queue by making a simple queue consumer using Spring Boot and also the JMS listener and enable JM JMS annotations. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.